ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله خير نبي ارسله ارسله الله الى العالمين بشيرا ونذيرا وداعيا الى الله باذنه وسراجا منيرا اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد صلاه وسلاما دائمين متلازمين الى يوم الدين اما بعد فاوصيكم ايها المسلمون ونفسي المذنبه بتقوى الله تعالى وقال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون وقال الله تعالى ايضا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد الله سبحانه وتعالى ان القران سد قد افلح المؤمنون in the arabic language this is a very clear declarative statement a statement of fact by the one who knows everything of the past who knows everything that will occur and who knows is absolutely nothing hidden from his knowledge with this knowledge he made a declarative fact he said qad aflah al mu'minun that is the believers have definitely without any ounce of doubt attained success Allah in this verse in Surah Al-Mu'minun continues to describe the traits the characteristics of these believers that he mentions and it's very important to note that all of the traits that Allah mentions in these verses none of them relates to wealth or high positions or positions of authority no right none of them relate to that which gives us a hint of the type of success that Allah has definitely claimed that the believers have attained what we want to focus on in this reminder is the word that Allah used for success aflaha there are many words that Allah could have used but what can we learn perhaps from the specific choice of this word that Allah has used here to give us maybe a better type of understanding of the type of success that Allah has guaranteed the believers of a type of success the word aflaha in the arabic language comes from falaha from a verbal perspective and one of the noun forms that comes from the same word is falahun which is a farmer in this light what can we learn from the success of a farmer and the process of achieving this success that can serve as a good template for us to gain a perspective of the success that could be intended or meant here 
Firstly, if we, and this is very important for us because when we look deeply at this, we can use this as a model of asking ourselves what kind of success should we as believers look forward to. Firstly, it's important to understand a farmer's mindset. A farmer relies on many things outside his control. And a farmer is comfortable with not being in full control of things outside his circle of influence. Like the sun, the farmer doesn't decide when the sun rises or when the sun sets. Like the rain and the actual germination of the plants, that, of the seeds that he plants and so on and so forth. You can say that the farmer has complete trust in Allah for the things that he or she has no control over. This mindset is important for believers because all Allah asks of the believers is for us to act. Allah says in the Quran and tell them to act and Allah will see your actions and his messenger. Allah asks us to act rightly and rely on him and know that the results of our actions are totally in his hands. With such a mindset, the farmer, what's the first thing that he does? The first task that the farmer does is to till the earth, find a fertile ground for planting. And no matter how good a seed or healthy a seed can be, it can't grow on concrete or it can't grow on paper or a shallow land that doesn't allow its roots to grow deep enough. If we look at that analogy, similarly, a believer must make sure that they take care of their heart, which is the source of all of their actions. A believer must make sure that they cultivate his heart, must make sure that he cultivates his heart and works on his heart as a matter of priority. No wealth, no children shall benefit us unless we approach Allah with a sound heart. Allah says in the Quran, يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ On a day which neither wealth nor children will benefit anyone except the one who comes to Allah with a sound heart. A sound heart is one that is free from the diseases of the heart. Anger, malice, envy, ostentatiousness, showing off, love for the dunya, pride, and the list goes on and on. Imam al-Ghazali, rahimahullah, he considers it compulsory upon every sane adult Muslim to know what these diseases of the heart are. Because Allah said in the verse we've just described, we've just recited that, nothing will benefit you on the day of judgment except by coming to him with a sound heart. If this is the only thing that will benefit, then we must know what the diseases of the heart are. We must learn these diseases and we must commit to a lifetime of trying to rid ourselves of these diseases. May Allah illuminate our hearts with his light and cure them of all these diseases that distances us or veil us from him. The second task that the farmer does is to plant the seed. The seed is planted deep in the earth. No one sees the planted seed except the farmer and his Lord. And this is a lesson for us all, to have secret acts of kindness, to give charities in secret, or to have secret acts of worship that stays between us and Allah. Resisting every urge to share these good deeds on social media or informing anyone of these actions. We should aim to have really, to plant so many seeds of righteous actions that we keep just between us and Allah. And by doing this, we cultivate sincerity. We create a relationship between us and Allah, whereby Allah's knowledge and Allah's vision of our actions 
become sufficient for us. The third task that the farmer does is that the farmer waters the planted seed consistently. Even when the farmer doesn't see the results of the watering, for example, on day one, he doesn't see anything grow. Day 10, he might not even see anything grow. He might have to wait for a month before he sees the first sprout, right? Yet, he continues watering, knowing and hoping that his efforts will not go to waste. As such, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed for believers as well daily acts of worship for us to keep watering. Daily acts of worship that we need to do to continue to draw closer to us. And some people say, I pray but I don't feel anything. I do these adhkar but I don't feel anything. The purpose of these acts of worship is not to feel something. Right? Because the feeling is a gift from Allah. And it might even be a veil from you if you do these acts of worship because of that feeling. Doesn't Allah deserve to be worshipped whether you feel excited or not? Or is Allah's worship dependent on how you feel about that worship? So, as such, a believer continues to act even when he doesn't see any visible results of his actions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks us to pray five times a day. We don't see the castles that Allah is building for those who hold on to their salah. The believer gives in charity even if he doesn't see the results of his charity. Knowing that whatever you spend for Allah, Allah would replace it. Right? And whatever you leave with Allah, Whatever you give for Allah's sake, you will find it with Allah in a much better state and with greater reward. So the believer in emulating the farmer, he just continues to act whether or not he feels something, whether or not he sees the result of his actions, right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described the believers in this, in Surah Al-Mu'minun as those who are continuous and watchful over their prayers. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَلَىٰ صَلَوَاتِهِمْ يُحَافِظُونَ also, when Allah in the famous hadith Qudsi, when the Prophet Muhammad told us that Allah described those who He loves, what did He say? And my servant continues to draw closer to me with extra acts of devotion until I love him. Hence, consistency in obligation in all the things that Allah has made obligatory upon us and all these voluntary extras, it guarantees you success and Allah's love. May Allah guide us to the path of consistency in righteous deeds that he's pleased with. The fourth task that the farmer does is that after doing all that is required, the farmer is patient and has complete trust in Allah regarding his crops to grow. We're all reminded in Surah Al-Waqi'ah where Allah says, A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitan Rajeem, Afara'aytum ma tahruthoon. Do you not look at what you sow? Antum tazra'oonahu am nahnu zari'oon. Are you the ones that cause it to grow or are we the ones that grow it? Right? Is it you who makes it grow or are we the grower? The farmer does not expect to plant and harvest in one day. The farmer knows that it takes time for seeds to grow, its roots, and for its body and branches to grow. Sometimes a farmer plants seeds that will not grow fully in his lifetime, that will not grow and flourish into trees in his lifetime. Also, the farmer knows that he is not the one that causes the seeds to grow. Similarly, the believer is patient with Allah. He doesn't demand, I want this now, I've just prayed, I want this now. Right? They don't see there, in fact, the true believer, he knows that his ability to worship Allah 
is a gift from Allah. Allah says, وَمَا بِكُمْ مِن نِعْمَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ Every single blessing that you have is from Allah. Your ability to worship Him is from Him. If you didn't have good health, would you be able to stand up? If you didn't have a sound mind, would you even know it's time to pray? There are so many blessings that He gives you to put you in a situation to be able to worship Him. So that when you do those actions, you realize you're doing it because you have a Lord that deserves to be worshipped. So as a result, the complete believer is totally patient with Allah. He knows that Allah's promise is true. We have the best example in the best of teachers. He was patient in calling people to Allah for 20 years. And in those, for 23 years, and in those years, it, there were so many ups and downs. In those years, there were times where people thought, are we not on the truth? What's going on? Right? How can we sign a contract that is so unfair, like they did in Hudaybiyah? How can we sign a treaty that says if they come to us, we must send them back, and if we go to them, they can, we have to stay there, or we can stay there? How can we sign such a contract? But the believer, in his actions, he's interacting directly with Allah. He has complete trust in Allah, such that when he acts, as long as his action is right, he is totally calm about the result. He leaves it with Allah and forgets it. Because, Whatever you think is with yourself, it has a beginning and an end. But whatever is with Allah will be forever. So the believer as such, he's focused on planting. He leaves them with Allah. He leaves the results of his actions with Allah. Not seeing the effects of their results doesn't affect their motivation. And the believer relies completely on, on Allah for barakah in everything that he does, for blessings in everything that he does. And finally, the result of all of these consistent actions by the farmer is that he has what? A beautiful farm or a beautiful garden. It's also very interesting that Allah promised the believers what? Jannat. Gardens underneath which rivers flow. Right? And in that verse, in, surah, in that surah, in, 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 the, in those verses in Surah Al-Mu'minun, Allah says, أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْوَارِثُونَ الَّذِينَ يَارِثُونَ الْفِرْدَوْسَ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ these believers who are consistent in all of these acts of worship mentioned, these are the inheritors. They, will, they are the ones that will inherit Firdaus and thereby they will abide forever. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also described a good tree, Allah described a good tree as something that has firm roots. Asluha thabitun wa far'uha fi sama. And believers, the actions that we expect that Allah wants from believers, its roots must be firm in complete belief in Allah. Its actions must be done just for Allah's pleasure, just for Allah's, you know, Allah's goodwill, just to please Allah, right? And the actions of, of a believer are similar to this good tree. Its roots are firm with complete belief in Allah and as such, its branches will reach the heavens. So, with this attitude in mind and learning from the mindset of a farmer, believers can aim for this type of success, which is not based on short-termism, which is not based on now or never, which is not based on if I don't see the results now, then it's not worth it, right? Because many of us, we are programmed by the tools we use to demand results straight away. I remember when we were growing up, we had to wait for about a minute or two to log on to the internet with so many interesting noises before you log on. Now, if your page doesn't load in two seconds, you feel there's something wrong. And as such, that mindset of expecting results quickly, some people erroneously bring that into their relationship with Allah or into their acts of worship and expect results straight away. Oh, I've been doing this afkar, this awrad for weeks now, and 
I still don't feel anything, right? And that's why Ibn Abdullah, he said, you know, it's better for you, I'm paraphrasing what he said in the Hikam, that for your tongue to be moist in remembrance of Allah without you feeling anything or without your presence in it is better than nothing. And perhaps the one who allowed your tongue to be moist with his remembrance or allowed your body to be used in his worship, perhaps he would take you from a state of ignorance or from a state of heedlessness or lack of awareness to a state of complete presence or to an even higher state of complete reliance on putting everything with Allah. So with this attitude in mind and learning from the mindset of a farmer, believers can aim for this kind of success and build systems, institutions and processes that will yield benefits for years to come and that will produce fruits till eternity by the permission of Allah. تُؤْتِي أُكْلَهَا كُلَّ حِينٍ بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهَا وَيَضْرِبُ اللَّهُ لَمْثَالَ لِلنَّاسِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَذَكَّرُونَ May Allah allow us to be of those people that plant actions that Allah describes as things that gives its fruits every season by the permission of His Lord, of its Lord. And Allah draws these parables for mankind so that they may take admonition. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا المصطفى وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أيها المسلمون اعلموا أن الله أمرنا بأمر عظيم بدأ فيه بنفسه وثن بالملائكته القدس وقال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات برحمتك يا مجيب الدعوات اللهم اجعلنا من عبادك المؤمنين اللهم اجعلنا من عبادك المؤمنين اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكره إلينا الكفر والفسوق والعصيان وجعلنا اللهم من الراشدين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم يسر لنا أمورنا مع الراحة لقلوبنا وأبداننا والسلامة والعافية في ديننا ودنيانا اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزق وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه وأعنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك ولا تجعلنا يا مولانا من الغافلين اللهم انصر المستضعفين المظلومين في كل مكان اللهم انصر المستضعفين المظلومين في كل مكان اللهم آمن بلادنا اللهم آمن بلادنا وبلاد المسلمين في كل مكان يا أرحم الراحمين عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزلكم ولا ذكر الله أولى وأكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقيم الصلاة